Welcome back to Cos3D, and this week we are talking about legs. Not only legs, but we're also going to talk about a solution to your center wheel that uh, we've come up with that if you don't want to spring for the extra Omni wheels, and we're going to talk about some Omni wheels. So let's get to it. Well, let's talk about basic leg construction here. Um, I will point out that I do have a large enough printer that I can do the entire leg uh, down to the ankle here in one print. That really helps out on structural integrity of these things. So if you do have to split these up in, uh, on your printer, they do epoxy together really well. But uh, I did do a six wall on the main part of the leg here and the ankle. Everything else, like the horseshoe and everything, those and, and, and this piece here, these were actually printed in just two walls and around 15-20% infill. I can't remember exactly what I did. But the legs themselves are pretty beefy. So they uh, have got little nuts falling out here. They, they turned out really well. I, I've got to say the design on these are fantastic. But uh, I'll show you some footage here in just a moment um, where I put the magnets in and everything. But just as a general broad overview, uh, they turned out, turned out great. So if th this is probably one of the more daunting tasks that uh, I ran into in the other construction of my other R2. And each leg is a build in and of itself, unfortunately. It's just a very, very big build. Um, everything is, is printed on the uh, normal, normal printer here, except for these two Greebles right here are actually resin printed. I believe that's the only thing that I ended up resin printing on this whole build, just because I didn't really want to put any time into finishing. So they went pretty quick little pro tip here on the leg cylinders and also on the uh, parts that, that go on the side of the leg greebles, greebles on the side here. Um, one thing that you, you kind of might not know is when I'm refinishing the uh, legs, I always like to put some tape down uh, to cover where I'm going to glue to so that I have glue on glue and not on paint so that they don't ever pop off. And um, it's, it's kind of a pretty simple little thing, but you just, take a, you just take a pencil when you're first starting on this and you run your, your parts, you outline your parts, you remove your part, and then you take some thin tape. In this case, I do like to use this yellow frog tape because you can actually see through it where your pencil line is or marker line or whatever you decide. And then I actually cut out, um, so the line would actually be more out in this area is actually where the part is. That's where the line would be. I go in, I don't know, a millimeter or two and just uh, cut it out so that I've got bare plastic to glue things to. Same thing with these front greeblies here and the same thing with the ankle. When I'm fitting the ankle into the leg, I actually, which I have already glued this all together, but there is no paint below this area on the leg part. And again, that just goes back to, you want to glue plastic to plastic any opportunity that you get. And um, when I'm painting my parts, I always try to mask off anything that is going to be touching plastic to plastic. So let's see if we can get this off here off while it's on camera. But this way now, we've got the exposed plastic so that we can dry fit these in here. And as you see, when we're dry fitting them, you can't see where I where I actually had it masked off. Now there is, if you put a lot of paint on it and a lot of filler on these parts, you could have a slight gap, but usually what I've found is a little bit of pressure, puts it right back down where it needs to be. Also, a little bonus tip on this ankle. I already glued one together this morning, but I'm gonna do another one here on camera. Um, when you have it marked, you now know where you can put your glue actually on 
the part or on the on the actual main piece rather than the part and if you've ever glued in one of these legs make certain that this silver piece is already on your leg before you glue it to the ankle fortunately I have not made that mistake I know some people that have and it's it's frustrating but it happens you can always cut that piece if you had to and glue it into glue it on there in sections but I found that this part because everything has to seat together actually found that if you drop that bottom piece in first you can put them all in there together they slide right in a little bit of pressure on it for a little bit uh, while that glue sets I usually do go back with some Instacure after it sits for a second because the longer the plastic sits against the plastic with the super glue the better your bond is going to be your Instacure is great but it does flash the uh, super glue and I just drop a couple little drips not a ton because I don't want it on my freshly done paint job here hands are a little bit dirty from working on that dome earlier but there you go it's that simple I was always very nervous when I went to go put these pistons in because I was afraid uh, the very first one I ever built I actually put this part in first and then realized it was kind of hard to finagle everything together but if you're able to get your glue down like I just showed you it makes it into a much easier process I'm going to work on the legs here, put the magnets in, and uh, just thought I'd give you a tip on that. Um, so I think they're 10 millimeter wide by 6 millimeter deep, um, or tall, or whatever you call it. But I actually buy the 3 millimeter, or 10 millimeter by 3 millimeter magnets because they're so much cheaper. So basically you just stack two of them in there. A um, little tip on this when you're putting your magnets together or getting your parts together for the magnets. Um, what I do is I usually stick a piece of tape on one end. So what's gonna happen is you are going to attach the magnets like this so that they attract obviously and it can get a little confusing at times. But what I do is I put a piece of tape on one end. I'm going to mix up some epoxy. I'm going to drop my magnets in here. And then I am going to do it on both of the legs. And then I'm going to flip my tape over and put the uh, magnets in the center pieces here. But just, just throw on a piece of tape on there for reference. I use a stick. Um, just a popsicle stick. Grab a little bit on there. Let's get those out of the way for a minute. And just drop it in. You'll probably be able to see this a little better on the covers that I'm going to do here in a second. Go ahead and drop all my epoxy in on the legs first. I don't like to get ahead of myself and get it on all the parts because if I run out of time or get interrupted or something happens, So we got all those dropped in. Now it's just the legs we're going to work on first. Make sure my fingers are clean. And I am going to drop two magnets in there. Slide them out. I'm going to hold those two while I put the next two in. Slide them out. Same over here. I know you probably can't see this very well on camera. But you obviously don't have a lot of time with the epoxy dry time. So now what I'm going to do is flip my tape over, stick it on this end, and I'm going to drop them into the blue center parts. And you want to get that on the sides if you can get it on the sides of the uh, holes as well as the bottom. So I'm going to stick two of them in, slide it out, 
hold that one so I don't grab it somehow. We're good, we're good. Come over here, same thing. I'm not shoving them down in there just yet. All right, now that they're in, get my magnets out of the way. And I am going to, you'll be able to see a little better here in just a second. We're going to just do a little bit of cleanup on the top. Make sure those are sitting down there nice and tight. Pushing that one down. Be extra careful that you don't have epoxy on your hands and you touch your finished work. There is nothing more sad than that. Those are set. Move over to this one, push it down, slide it out. Same here. I didn't dry fit these. Those aren't sitting down in there too horribly deep. They're actually a little proud. I think they'll be all right. These are a little sunken in just a hair so it ought to balance out. Like I said, I am putting just a little bit of pressure on them, make sure they're down in there good as I'm wiping. That should do it. We'll know in about 24 hours when we flip them over and make sure that they stick, hopefully. Now let's move over to the center foot. Um, I actually have on my old R2 unit, if I can grab them here, I actually have the 3D printed Omni wheels and they work great. I mean, I've not really had any major wear and tear on them. Uh, the orange thing that you see in here is because I broke a rod at a con and ended up throwing a, um, a carbon fiber rod in there. <coughs> it is currently free floating, so nothing's, nothing's attached right now because I've been tearing this apart and uh, doing some maintenance on it. But I... I saw where some guys are using more of the office chair wheels. I will link these down in the description as well as the modified plate uh, that I extended so that they could accommodate these wheels so that they didn't run into each other. Um, I will say, let me grab a wheel here off camera. I will say with this particular design that you do actually have to grind down a, a pretty good little portion of this just so it doesn't connect with the outer part of the foot shell. And just to give you an idea roughly, I basically just ground it down uh, to where that white line is and I've got marginal clearance. I might have to take a little bit more off once we get him on his feet because if these do flex just a hair, um, we'll see what happens but i've left the I, I like i said i linked the part here um on on thingiverse where you can download this uh it's the original part i just extended it so that it would fit in there nice and snug and be able to accommodate the wheels if you print this part i did it with uh, six shells and i believe it was 40 percent infill so i wanted to make sure that that piece was extremely extremely beefy. I didn't want that thing to come out or fracture on the edges of the uh, of the roller wheels here. But I think this is a very inexpensive and easy fix. Plus, it's a lot quieter uh, when you're driving it around, you know, at a con or whatever. It, it makes almost no noise. What you're hearing is me going side to side here on the workbench. But we'll, we're going to give that a test out and see how well it does. But I am putting Omni wheels in the main foot drives. And what I, what I did was I just bought the VEX wheels um, and then I routed out the center here. I built a collar that just slides in, friction fits, and it is very tight. Once you get that in there, you can follow that up with your standard bearing. Again, I will link that in the description and those are not overly structural, so you don't have to worry too much about how thick you print, how many walls and all that. They're, they're pretty, uh, once they're in there, they're in there. So 
That is going in each of the left and right foot drives, and we'll get to that in another video when I actually build those and uh, get those set up. Everything, uh, everything so far progressing along really well. I mean, it's just an, a very interesting uh, way that it's designed. It's fantastic. I mean, if you watched any of the videos, we're going to link the files down in the description for the Mr. Badley uh, R2 Builders Club. So you can jump down there, join his Patreon. It, I mean, it's worth every penny if you want to print one of these for yourselves. So that's about it on the legs other than the assembly is super easy uh there are directions online there's really no reason for me to go into too much detail well i thank you guys for joining us today and make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button and we're just going to continue as w time permits me i'm going to continue to upload these videos so we hope that you enjoyed the brief overview that we did on the legs uh, watch out for the foot, sh the foot shell and foot drive videos. Those will be coming up here in the next few weeks. So hopefully you learned something from today as always. And thanks for tuning in and we will see you in the next video.